week later, why don't you give me five of the same games to look at? Today, we are ranking every single new Super Mario Bros. game in the series, starting from the worst game and finishing with the best. Yes, these games are very similar in nature. That is kind of the running joke here with the whole new title. But we are comparing the differences in the games today and overall which game is the best. Alright, let's get new. Okay, so here we have the five contestants on the show with me. Who will be knocked out and who will be claimed the winner? Well, I can tell you the first person to be knocked out is... Yeah, sorry buddy. Honestly, I don't really know why people like the Wii one so much. For me, the level design was kind of just off. The levels in this game felt empty, like a lot of space wasn't used up that well. I get it, this game's gotta support a family now because for the first time this game has four player co-op, but regardless of the design decision to do so, this game still has a lot of wasted space in the levels. In this section here, you are literally just jumping across spinning grass balls with nothing else. Also, the visuals look the same compared to the previous one on the DS. Sure, it's on better hardware, but the backgrounds and other assets show the least amount of change in the series. Whoa, shit, I should be talking about why I like this game. The two new power-ups that they introduced were some fine additions to the game. The propeller suit was awesome, finally giving those snotty kids some representation in Mario games. It was just fun to launch yourself up, feeling like a, a rocket ship or something, I don't know. Then we got the penguin suit, where you feel like a bobsled that can swim like Michael Phelps. So fun to use. Also, some of the puzzles and new mechanics in this game were great new ideas. Elevators that you rock left and right to avoid bullets, as well as jumping from these flying beetle things. And then there's the, what I like to call, the GET OFF MY YACHT level. You're just cruising around in a poison swamp and enemies keep jumping on your yacht, causing it to stop. So you just gotta ask them to leave to keep progressing in the level. So while the Wii one was good, that's all it was. Just good. next game to go would have to be the third game in the series, called New Super Mario Bros. 2. That makes sense. See, the thing with this one was it had to be the game with the least amount of new ideas added to it. Combine that with another New Super Mario Bros. game coming out the same year, and people weren't too thrilled about this one. But see, one of the reasons why I put this over the Wii version was because the level design was a lot more tighter and solid this time around. I thought a lot of the levels this time just had more purpose to them, as well as being cleaner and more interesting to maneuver. And how could I not mention the coins in this game? My opinion on this feature is that it's okay. I'll admit it, it was pretty fun collecting all these things at the start of the game. Like, YEAH! COINS! But after a while, I just got bored of collecting them, and they made no attempt to have any other use than just the coins giving you a 1-up. Sure, now there's a coin counter. I say coin counter, coin schmouter. Who cares, it still does nothing. But come on, I could admit that taking a golden fire flower and turning everything into gold is just super fun. Like your Midas or something. Don't know the reason of that. It could just be the primal money-hungry instinct that humans have in society. I mean, it, it could also be something else too. I guess that's an option. But anyways, now let's move on to the power-ups. Because this time around, the grand total of new power-ups is... Zero! Sure, you can argue that the previously mentioned gold flower is technically new, but that's more of a gimmick since you can't carry the power up between levels, and it's pretty overpowered as well. The one great power up in this game is the return of the raccoon suit, because not only is it the only power up in the entire new Super Mario Bros. series that lets you actually fly, but it's the only flying power up that I can recall in recent Mario games in general. This one actually gives you some elevation, not just this floating garbage we've been all seeing. It's a rehash of an old power-up, sure, but this whole series is a big rehash, so, um, check and mate. Gotcha there. And then there were three. Luigi's always third-wheeling anyways, right? New Super Luigi U. Uh, that one with that uh, green guy, you know? I like how they changed up the controls and physics of your character since you're playing as Luigi this time. You get some extra airtime by using your kick flapping maneuver and you decided to wear slippery shoes this time. These new movement features worked well with the increased difficulty in the game, which just allows for some fun gaming challenges to come out of this. But since Mario's not here this time, who's the last playable character in four player mode? 
This guy, the the masked bunny, Bunny Bowser Jr. What the hell is this guy's name again? Oh, Nabbit, right. He doesn't blink. It's weird. As you know, Luigi is the star of the show here, and he is really enjoying the spotlight this time. Because now, there is a hidden Luigi in every level. So that's, uh, something, I guess. More of a visual thing, but it keeps on reinforcing the fact that this is a Luigi game. Speaking of visuals, I also really like the new assets that they created for the game. From these garden sculptures to this Bowser snowman, it's cool to see brand new stuff like this added to the series. It's a hard new Super Mario Bros game without Mario, and where every level is 100 seconds. That's the most unique thing I've heard all day. It feels surreal playing this game, like it's a fan game. Where am I, in the Twilight Realm? Twilight Zone? Twilight? Uh, let's, uh, hope it's not the third one. And now we're at the final two, so by revealing this pick, I'm ultimately revealing the first place pick. So for that reason, I'm not showing the game covers this time. I'm assuming you're gonna forget the game covers in the previous sections as well. The one that started it all actually put the meaning of new in the word new. New Super Mario Bros. DS. Remember when the DS first came out? Crazy new handheld technology that had two screens for one game. I don't even know how this thing worked at the time. What do you need, a different copy for each of the screens or something? This game just had really solid level design as well as being one of the better challenges in the series. The bosses were really great in this game as well. So you would think that this was setting up for future great bosses in games to come. Well, uh, it didn't. There were Monty Mole's driving tanks, mummified pokies, and what? Petey Piranha was in this game? That's a plus in my books. There were also so many great and unique enemies in this game that haven't made an appearance since. I don't know where they all went. As for the new power-ups in this game, they were just kind of mediocre, to be honest. The big one this time, and I can assure you that there was no pun intended there, was the Mega Mushroom. This was like a power-up and a half was almost too good, you just turn the gameplay into press right. But there is something so satisfying about just breaking the level in front of you. Next we have the mini mushroom, which was more like a power down, power up kinda. Let's go with power neutral. You have floatier jumps and you are a smaller target, but you are very weak and it's the only power up where you die in one hit. So it's kinda like a trade off. The last new addition was the shell. I heard a lot of people hate on this one, but you know, I kind of like it. Something so satisfying about timing every jump at this shell speed and acting as a, like an invincible brick. Whoa, geez, never would have guessed. New Super Mario Brothers U. I really like the atmosphere in this game. It genuinely feels like one cohesive world over any other new Super Mario Bros. game. They of course have the world map that adds to this feeling. It shows your location on the map relative to the castle and shows your progression throughout the Mushroom Kingdom, which all helps build a more believable setting. And all the worlds have food names now. Maybe the developers were getting a bit hungry when making this game, who knows. It's not like just having a map adds to the immersion, but it's the levels as well. The backgrounds in these levels were very detailed this time around, and a lot of times you can see other places from within other levels. Look how you can view Peach's castle in the background of the very first level. I also just like how the backgrounds look in this game as well. From starry night skies, to beautiful underwater sections, and fucking Vincent Van Gogh paintings! Mwah! I love it. The new power-ups in this game were some of my favorites as well. Finally, Nintendo let us power up and transform into the legendary creature of a squirrel. You can jump super high, glide around in the air, and even jump in the air. That's some cool features right there. While that was the only traditional power-up, they gave us baby Yoshis this time to make up for it. These things come in multiple different colors and flavors. The pink Yoshi is the most overpowered version in the game. He transforms himself into a balloon, allowing you to pretty much cross any gap with relative ease. I mean, I don't know what the precautions are of stretching to that size, but um, suggest talking to your doctor. Then we got the blue one, and this guy just likes bubbles, okay? Hey, don't kid yourself, these are powerful bubbles. Literally every enemy gets killed by them. Then there's the yellow one, but it sucks. There's also a bunch of extra fun modes in this game, like the challenge levels, most notably. You could just spend hours on these modes alone, and these actually put meaning into the word challenge. I'm just gonna say, if this was the only new Super Mario Bros game that came out, then people would be demanding for a sequel to this series. However, in reality, it's more of the opposite, and people are saying the opposite about another sequel to the series. 
And that was my list of what I thought the best of these games were. So now that we're done that list, let's move on to my top five better subtitles for these games. The only new one, the one with multiplayer, the one with the coins, the one no one bought, the green one. Yes, we're done here. That took way too many takes.